the next question from the sister in the rear. Assalamu alaikum, sir. My name is Rashmi Singh. I want you to say that I have accepted Islam from my heart. But I want to say that you have to read me. Sister said that she wants to accept Islam and she wants me to make her read the Shada. Do you understand English, sister? Yes. Do you believe there's one God? Yes. Do you believe that idol worship is wrong? Yes. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger of God? Yes. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No. Is there any economic pressure? No. Is there any physical pressure? No. Are you accepting with your free will? Yes. Yes, sister. So I will inshallah recite the Kalma in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And Prophet Muhammad. And Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is his servant and messenger. Is his servant and messenger. MashaAllah sister. Now you are a Muslim and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he guide you and may he keep you on the straight path as Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse number 8. Rabbana la tulzi qulubana ba'adith hadaytana wa hablana min ladun karhema inna kantal wahab. That oh Lord, please keep us on the straight path after thou hast guided us and keep us on the straight path. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give you more hidayah to keep you in the straight path and may he grant you jannah. So, I want to ask you one question. Sir, if my parents know about my parents, then how can I like, understand how I do what I'm doing is right? Sister has a question that if the parents come to know at home, how will she convince the parents that what she's doing is the truth? Sister, the answer is that how will she convince the parents that what she's doing is the truth? Sister, first thing is that you start loving your parents more, number one. Start loving your mother and father more, obey them, respect them. Follow them unless if they tell you something against Allah and His Rasul, that's the only time you disobey. There should be a difference between what you were before and what you are now. Maybe you never used to follow many of the advice. Now, as long as what they say doesn't go against Quran and say Hadith, my request to you is even if you don't like it, you start following. They should see a difference. This is my daughter before she was a Muslim, and now this is my daughter after she accepted Islam. If they find a change in you, they will start asking you, Are, yesterday you weren't following me, now you're following everything what I'm saying. Immediately. Why? This is what the Quran says. This is what our beloved Prophet said, that paradise lies beneath the feet of your mother. In this way, you try and win them over. The Quran says in Surah Futila, chapter number 41, verse number 34, that it is better to win over them and it can be done with hikmah. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, Udu ila wal mu'adhidil hasna, wajadun bilati asan. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in ways that are best and most gracious. I would request you to give my DVD similarities between Islam and Hinduism to your parents and inshallah it will soften their heart and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give hidayah to your parents also and to your family members. Thank you sir. Yes brother. Mic number one in the front. Dr. Jakir Naik sir, I call you to your heart from your heart. My name is Eshu Das. So my question is this way that Islam कितनी शादी करने का इजाजत देता है और क्यों? Brother asked the question that how many marriages are permitted in Islam and why? Referring to the polygamy. मतलब मैं जानना चाहता हूँ कि कुरान के अनुसार में सही में कितना होना चाहिए और कितना नहीं होना चाहिए? According to the Quran, how many marriages can you do? As far as the woman is concerned, according to Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number twenty to twenty four. A married woman cannot marry again, so women should have only one husband maximum. As far as the other is concerned, 
Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 3 marry women for choice in twos threes or fours but if you can't do justice marry only one you can marry two three or four but if you can't do justice marry only one this statement marry only one if you can't do justice is only given in the Quran there's no other scripture on the face of the earth which says marry only one besides the Quran if you read the Ramayana if you read the Mahabharat you can marry as many wives as you want if you read Ramayana the father of Ram how many wives he had? He had more than one wife. Krishna, if you read Mahabharat, how many wives he had? Two, four, ten, thousand, ten thousand, sixteen thousand one hundred and eight wives. So when Krishna can have sixteen thousand one hundred and eight wives, so why can't we Muslims have up to four? If you read the Bible, in the Old Testament as the New Testament, you can marry as many wives as you wish. Solomon had seven hundred wives. Abraham had three wives according to the Bible. It is the church which put up a limit. Christians should marry only one. It is Rabbi Ben Shimgan Hauda who passed a synod that Jews should marry only one. In India, it is the Indian Penal Code in 1954 which passed a law in Hindu Marriage Act which said that Hindu should marry only one. It is the Indian Penal Code, not the Hindu scripture, which says that Hindu should have only one wife. Let's analyze what are the reasons that Islam gives permission for a man to have more than one wife. Marrying more than one wife is not compulsory in Islam, it's optional. But if you marry more than one wife, you should do justice between your wives. The logical reasons we can think that Islam has given permission are that male and female are born in equal proportion. But if you ask any medical doctor, any pediatrician, he will tell you that the girl the female child is the stronger sex medically as compared to the male child. She can fight the germs and diseases much better than a male child. So more female children are alive as compared to male children. As life goes on, there is death due to war, due to accident, due to cigarette smoking, due to alcohol. In all these cases, more male are dying as compared to female. So today in the world, there are more females in the world as compared to males. In few third world countries like India, etc., where the female population is less than the male population because of female infanticide and female feticide. Every year in India, more than one million fetuses are being aborted after they identified that they are females. If this evil practice stops, even in India, the male population will become less than the female population. In New York alone, there is one million female more than males. In USA alone, there are 7.8 million female more than males. In UK alone, there are 4 million female more than males. In Germany alone, there are 5 million female more than males. In Russia alone, there are 9 million female more than males. And God alone knows how many millions of females are more than males throughout the world. If I agree with you that one man should only marry one woman, and suppose the market is saturated, and if your sister happens to live in America, or my sister happens to live in America, and if she happens to be one of the 7.8 million females who has not found a life partner, the only option for her is that she either marries a man who already has a wife, or she becomes public property. Public property, such a harsh word. This is the most sophisticated word I can use. I cannot think of a better word than this. And any modest woman would say that if the option is given, she would prefer marrying a man who already has a wife than become public property. Hope that answers the question. We will not allow any further questions. But the volunteers are pointing out someone. This was the last question, actually, but we'll allow that Shahada. And inshallah, we'll carry on with the other program. Do you believe there's one God? Brother? Hello. In the first place, do you believe there's one God? Kya mande khudai ke? Hello, my salam alaikum. Do you believe there's one God? Kya mande ke khudai ke? Ek ek aadhar karke ek ek rakta hu. Aap mande ke Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam akhri pay kambar hai? Ha, manta hu. Aap mande? Manta. Aap pe koi zabar dasti kar raha hai Islam kabool karne ke liye? Koi aap pe zabar dasti kar raha hai? Nahi. आप अपने मर्जी से कबूल करना चाहते हैं। हाँ, मर्जी से कबूल करना चाहते हैं। ओके, इन्शाअल्लाह, बोथ द ब्रदर्स, इन्शाअल्लाह, दे कैन सेव द शादा आई जस्ट सेइंग अरबिक एंड यू कैन रिपीट इट एंड देन वी कैन हैव द नेक्स्ट सेशन। अश्शदु, अश्शदु, अल्लाह, अल्लाह, इलाहा, इलाहा, इल्लाह, इल्लाह, व अश्शदु, व अश्शदु, � इलावा कोई माबूद नहीं कोई माबूद नहीं और और मोहम्मद मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाह सल्लल्लाह अलैहि वसल्लम 
علیہ اس کے بندے اس کے بندے اور پیغمبر ہے اور پیغمبر ہے ماشاء اللہ آپ مسلمان ہو چکے اللہ آپ کو جزا خیر دے اور اللہ آپ کو ہدایت دے اور میں دعا کروں گا کہ اللہ آپ کو جنت نصیب فرمائے اینڈ دس اینڈ دا سیشن اینڈ آئی گو ٹو مائی بردر ٹو ان شاء اللہ کنٹینیو ود دا نیکسٹ سیشن میرا ایک نام رکھ دیا آپ اپنا نام عمر رکھ سکتے عمر Evil is approaching, is approaching, is approaching, is approaching. A gap has appeared in the barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, like this. This, this, this. this is part of a hadith that was spoken over 1400 years ago. And if it was near then, Imagine, imagine how near how it is near now. It is now. My name is Muhammad Tim Humble, and in this series we explore the hadith of Sahih Muslim that speak of the trials and tribulations that are to come in the end of days. The end of days. Know and understand the signs of the final day to increase your taqwa and protect your iman in end of days. Every Friday at 6 p.m. and repeat telecast at 5.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. The more you hear about it, the more you desire to prepare for it. Life after death. Journey of the soul. The day of resurrection. The torment of the hellfire. The reward of paradise. Stay tuned for a life-changing, heart-softening, spiritually uplifting series about the hereafter exclusively on Peace TV. Know the vivid descriptions of paradise and hellfire from the Quran and authentic ahadith and acquire life-changing habits to be successful in the hereafter. Every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and repeat telecast at 5.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Jazakallah khair. It was a wonderful session. Inshallah, we'll have the dua, but before that, a very short session. We have most of our distinguished guests and distinguished speakers who have come from various countries present here, I request them to kindly come on stage before Sheikh Salah al Budair would present his dua. May I request, I'll call out the names, but I would request you before your name is called out, kindly move up. All the distinguished speakers who have been officially invited by us, kindly move on to the stage and form a semicircle along with uh, Brother Zakir. I'll just repeat the names. Brother Sheikh Abdul Rahim Green of UK. I request all the speakers without a name being called, please come on the stage, please. All the speakers, all the 30 speakers who have spoken for 10 days. Brother Abdul Rahim Green, UK, Yasir Fazaga, USA, Sheikh Yasir Qadi, USA, Sheikh Hosseini, Malaysia, Sheikh Salim Alamri, UAE, Sheikh Saeed Raghi of Somalia, Sheikh Asim Al Hakim, Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, USA, Dr. Jafar Idris, Sudan, Brother Yusuf Idris, Sudan, Dr. Zaglul Al Najjar, Egypt. Sheikh Abdul Rahim McCarthy, USA, Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim, Australia, Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya, USA, Sheikh Haitam Al Haddad, UK, Brother James Yee from USA, Sheikh Arib Islam, South Africa, Sheikh Jimmy Jones, USA, Dr. Ahmad Ibn Saifuddin, Saudi Arabia, Brother Iqbal Sakrane, UK, and of course from India we have Farik Naik, Dr. Shweb Sayyid, Brother Nisar Nadiadwala, Brother Atar Khan, and lastly Dr. Zakir Naik. All on stage before you. Let us give them a big ovation. 
recognition for all they have been doing for the last 10 days. They have been busy, not only on this ground and in the AC auditorium before you, but in television talks which they have been recording all along. I would request the honored guests from abroad and India who are with us here to kindly stand on the sides of the speakers as they speak to give them encouragement and give them a warm, hearty send off before this last session. I request with the Bandara Raji, Saudi Arabia, Mana Joseph, Saudi Arabia, Muhammad Nasser Al Mozari, Oman, Yusuf Muhammad Najabi, uh, UAE, and the others from UAE, Ibrahim Fayyaz Al Shamsi, Hassan Muhammad Al Rahman. I request Brother Salman Fazlur Rahman from Bangladesh, Shayan Fazlur Rahman from Bangladesh. I would request, in fact, all the others who have been invited by us as the honored guests to kindly come up on the stage without me actually spending more time with the audience calling you up. Please, I would request especially we have the ambassador of Saudi Arabia to India, Ambassador Extraordinary, Sheikh Faisal bin Hassan Tarad amongst us. I request him to kindly move up on the stage along with Brother Abdul Monem Al Mahmoud, the Vice Consul General of Saudi Arabia, to kindly come on stage and let us hear the speakers present the concluding remarks, after which we would have dua by Sheikh Salah Al Budair. I would request Sheikh Ali Al Abbasi to also come up on stage. May I request the others who have also been part of our program, the Nasheed artist, Brother Abdullah Role of UK, and all the Qaris to kindly come up on stage. Sheikh Salah Al Bukhatir from UAE. Sheikh Abdul Fattah Al Taruti from Egypt, Sheikh Al Sayyid Ibrahim Muhammad from Egypt, and the others. Please forgive me if I've missed out any of our honored guests. Kindly come up on stage so we can start the session right away. We have a short time at request our distinguished speakers to present their brief concluding remark in approximately a minute or so, so that we give all the speakers a chance to present their remark. We start with the same list in my hand. Brother Abdul Rahim Green from UK would request you to come on mic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Um, brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you so much uh, for turning up, coming to this peace conference, and for giving us a, such a beautiful, warm reception here in India, in this mashallah, very warm country, alhamdulillah. It's been a real pleasure spending these days here. Alhamdulillah. Allah Akbar. It's been a real pleasure spending these days here in India in this fantastic conference. It is really something for the whole of India to feel proud about. This fantastic conference uh, organized by these fantastic people here. May Allah bless all the volunteers, all the helpers, all the workers, and of course, Dr. Zakir Naik. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Dr. Jafar Idris. From Sudan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised for those who make jihad for his sake. Make jihad means strive, strive for his sake. Then he will certainly guide them to his ways. This means that anyone who believes in the Creator whether he is a Muslim or a non-Muslim, if he turns to that Creator and sincerely asks him to guide him to the right path, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that he will do so. Sheikh Yasser Fazaga from USA, California. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the most merciful, all praises due to Allah. And may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The theme of this conference has always been regarding peace, revolving around the concept of peace. Please, let's all establish peace in our hearts by having a proper relationship with our Creator. And let's start in peace by making sure that we have peace in our families. To the people of India, you should be very proud of this conference. This is the biggest conference in the world, in the Muslim world today. And for this, say congratulations. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless all your efforts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh Yasser Qadi from USA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علیہ رسول اللہ آپ لوگوں میں سے بہت زیادہ لوگ نے مجھ سے درخواست کیا کہ میں آپ کو اردو زبان میں خطاب کروں میں ذرا شرماتا ہوں چونکہ اردو میری مادری زبان نہیں ہے ماں کی زبان ہوگی لیکن مادری زبان نہیں ہے اور دوسری بات ہے یہ کانفرنس تو انگریزی میں کیا جا رہی ہے تو اسی لیے اردو مناسب نہیں ہے لیکن ان اللہ میں اللہ تعالیٰ سے دعا کرتا ہوں تمنا رکھتا ہوں کہ ایک دن ان اللہ میں پھر سے آؤں گا اور آپ کو پورا ایک لیکچر اردو میں ہی دوں گا جو میسج میں چھوڑنا چاہ رہا ہوں دا میسج آئی لیو یو ود از ویری سمپل اینڈ دیٹ از ورشپ اللہ سبحان تعالیٰ الون اینڈ ڈو دیٹ ورشپ بیسڈ اپان دا سن آف دا میسنجر آف اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ دیٹ از دا میسج آف آر ریلیجن اینڈ دیٹ از دا میسج آف دا کلیمہ لا الہ الا اللہ محمد الرسول اللہ مے اللہ عز و جل یونائٹ اس آل اپان دس کلیمہ اینڈ بلس آل دی آرگنائزرز اینڈ والنٹیئرز آف دس کانفرنس و جزاکم اللہ خیر و السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ Sheikh Hussain Yee from Malaysia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remind us, Rajulan tahabba fillahi istima'an alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi. If the Muslim meet for the sake of Allah, and they are going to depart for the sake of Allah, then Allah will give us the shade in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. On the behalf of me and my people, we wish to thank all the organizing committees, especially to Dr. Zakhar Naik, who have conducted this 10 days conference that will enrich us with the knowledge of Islam. We would like to pray, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins, inshallah. Amen. And also, may Allah strengthen our iman and we love you for the sake of Allah. What are you going to say? You must say that we love you too for the sake of Allah. I say it again. We love you for the sake of Allah. May Allah bless us. May Allah bless us. May Allah forgive all our sin. The sin of our parents who die as a Muslim. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Wa billahi tawfiqi wal akhri da'wana. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam. We just have Sheikh Ali Al-Abbasi, Imam Masjid Al-Aqsa also present on the stage. May I also mention that amongst our speakers who have left but they have given their regards is Dr. Jamal Badawi of Canada, Dr. Mamdu Muhammad of USA, Dr. Lawrence Brown of USA, Brother Amar Aymonet of USA and Brother Anwar Ibrahim, the Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia and present leader of the opposition in Malaysian Parliament. They have given their regard and the lastly we had very emotional brother Zain Bika also had left uh, he's from South Africa who has given our regards to the whole conference may I have the next speaker Sheikh Salim Alamri from UAE present his comments to you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts. May Allah accept the efforts of the organizers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our hearts upon the truth. Amen. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in an authentic hadith, Al-jama'atu rahma wal furqatu adab, togetherness and the unity is a mercy from Allah and division and disunity is a punishment from Allah and you have been experiencing this beautiful feeling the feeling of brotherhood the warmth of the brotherhood this is because this is the barakah of the togetherness my dear brothers and sisters in Islam remember that the unity is a mercy so strive hard to bring and bridge the gap between the Muslims May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the hearts of all the Muslims on the truth. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.